see your beauty and your glory. I see your power and your wonder. God, I look up at the sky and I see that you have created it marvelous. I look out at your people, God, and you have created them marvelous. I look at the wonders of your hands, oh God, and it is marvelous in our sight. Marvelous, oh God, the things that you have done in this earth realm, the things that you have done for your people, the things that you are even yet to do, God, the things that you are beginning to do for your people. And as we exalt you tonight. We call on your name because we don't ever want to come to you, God, just any old kind of way. We don't want to serve you anything, God. We want to come before you humble, broken, contrite before you, oh God. We come before you, Adonai, and we say, Lord, we love you. We come before you, El Shaddai, God Almighty, and we say, God, we love you. We come before you, I teach you, me, my ancient of days, and we tell you that we love you tonight. We praise you, we bless you, we magnify you. We come before you, Rosh Pinah, our capstone, our cornerstone, the very anchor of my life, and I tell you that I love you tonight, Lord. We come before you, El Elohe Kedim, my eternal God, from everlasting to everlasting. Blessing. And I come before you today, Elohe Kedim, and tell you that I love you and I bless you and I praise you. I come before you because you are V. You are my father and it becomes a personal thing with me. Because you are V, you are father, you are Abba, your daddy, your partner, my daddy. Because I come before you, God, as humble as I know how. Stretched out to my daddy, my partner, my Abba, my V, and tell you that I love you. I come before you today and wrap my arms around you, V and tell you that I bless your holy and your righteous name. I come before you, Adonai Suri, Lord, my rock. Because the Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Because you have been a shield and a shelter for me. You are a strong tower against the enemy. You are a strong tower against the wind. You are a strong tower against the rain. You are a strong tower against the flood. Because the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that you would lift up a standard against him. And the Holy Spirit of God is that standard. So Adonai Suri, Lord my rock, lift up a standard in this neighborhood tonight. Lift up a standard on these corners, Lord. Every four corner of this neighborhood. Lift up a standard on that highway 71. Lift up a standard on God all along Highland. 27th Street Prospect. Lift up a standard tonight, oh God. Even on the block to the back of me. Lift up a standard, oh God, all over Kansas City, Missouri. And let the Spirit of the Lord resonate in this neighborhood. Let the people come out of their houses and say, what is that going on? Let the people come out of their houses and say, I hear a sound from heaven and I'm drawn to it. I hear a sound from heaven and I'm hungry for it. I hear a sound from heaven and I'm thirsty for it. I hear a sound from heaven and I'm a ravenous wolf for it. I hear a sound from heaven and I'm going to chase after it. Let the resonation of my voice, oh God, go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come. Go so that not just tonight, Father, because you're setting the atmosphere tonight. But God, tomorrow when we come back, it's going to be saturated. And they're going to come running out of their houses, oh God, to see what's going on in the neighborhood. To see what's going on on the child church on the corner. Father God, send them, oh Lord, because you said to seek and save the lost. So Father, we are under this tent tonight. Adonai Suri. We planted on the rock of this little area, God. We planted right here, Father, so that you can do an awesome and mighty work in this place. We planned it, oh God, like never before. So you can do a work in this neighborhood. This is just the beginning, oh God. Let us go into the highways and byways and take this neighborhood. You said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it by force. The neighborhood suffers violence. And then we are taking this neighborhood by force. The church is suffering violence and the church is going to take it by force. The people are suffering violence and the people are going to take it by force. We're going to take it for the kingdom of God. We're taking it for the king and the kingdom. We're taking it for the king and the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Now God, we bless you tonight. And Father, I die right here, right now, God, before you, that you would have your way in me and through me. Have your way, oh God, like never before. Let your word, oh God, speak from my heart. Let your word, oh God, 
God, resonate under this tent. Let your word, oh God, go into the heavens, oh God, and let it be a sweet smelling savor in your ear. Father God, I bless you tonight. I praise you tonight. I magnify you tonight. And I lift up your holy and your righteous name. For with the name which is above every name, oh God, that's Emmanuel, God with us. That's El No Say. That is the God who forgives my sins. Father, as you forgive us tonight of everything that we have done against you, as you bring this word forth, God, let it speak to the heart of the people. Let it speak in such a way, oh God, that it brings them to their face, even under this tent, to a place of repentance for doing whatever it is that has been against you. Because God is only against you and you only have we done these things. It's only against you have we been snacking on this word. It's only against you, oh God, have we done a thing that has not been pleasing in your sight. Now, Father God, I bless you tonight. And I praise you tonight. And I magnify you and glorify you. And I lift up the holy and righteous name, which is above every name. And that name is Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 I honor the Lord tonight. Under this marvelous sky, I honor the Lord tonight. Honor to my husband, Pastor Greg Hadnot. To my sister, Apostle Sarah. That's a bad warrior right there, wife. <laughs> <laughs> to my friend, my friend Zenobia, my friend Pastor Leland back there, my friend Eddie Williams, I sent out a text and God sent some for us. Thank God, amazing. And to all of the saints of God tonight, Woo, we bless the Lord tonight. You know, as we were in prayer earlier, uh, Apostle White was praying. God had given me one message when I was at home. But when I got here, he just... You know God do it like that. He just flipped the script. So I would ask you tonight, what are you hungry for? And for a subtitle, are you snacking? That's your subtitle, are you snacking? So if you have your Bible, go with me first of all to Psalm 42. In verse 1. And if you have your Bible, stand for the reading of God's word, please. The Bible says in Psalm 42 and 1, As the deer pants after the water brooks, so pants my soul after thee. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? You may be seated. In Psalm 42, it is first of all talking about being thirsty. It is a metaphor using the deer by the water brooks. And he said, my soul thirsts for God. For the living God. When you're thirsty for something, what's the first thing you do? You grab some water. The first time you get thirsty, you're going to reach for some water. You're going you to drink. Because you're thirsty. Yeah. Well, what happens to your inner man when he's thirsty? Yeah. When your inner man says, I'm thirsty. Uh -huh. I want something to drink. Do you reach for the word and begin to drink of this word? Or do you go get something else? That's your first question. Now go over to Psalm 63. And you don't have to stand. Psalm 63 and 1 says, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. So here's David in the wilderness of Judah. He's running from his son Absalom, running for his life. He says, O oh God, thou art my God. I'm seeking you early. So he gets up early in the morning. Early in the morning, he said, my soul thirsts for thee. Out in the wilderness, and the wilderness is a desert. Oh, yeah. So he's out in the wilderness, running for his life, and even in the midst of them trying to take his life, he's still thirsty for God. Oh, even in the midst of the enemies, the player haters, the naysayers, the spectators, the instigators, coming against David, 
He's out there saying, I'm thirsty for God. I'm hungry for God. I want some more of God. I need some God out here in this wilderness. When you are in the wilderness of your life and all hell's breaking you loose in your life, you going through, your job played out, your money ran out, you're about to get set out of your house, your car broke down, your husband, your wife crazy, your kids crazy, and all the dogs are crazy. Are you still thirsty for God? Are you still hungry for God? Even in the midst of all hell breaking loose. The folks are talking about you when they don't want you to come back to the church and preach. When they don't want you on your job, they tell you they're going to lay you off and not going to give you no service pay. Are you still going to be hungry for God? Are you still going to be thirsty for God? Are you still going to chase after God with everything you got? Because the minute the enemy comes in like a flood, that's when you're supposed to shift gears and get on your face before God. When the enemy starts running up beside you, beating you upside your head, you're supposed to run to your face, get on your face, and get in this word and say, God, my soul thirsts for you. I don't care what's happening on that job. I want some more of you. I don't care if I'm hungry. I need some more of you. I don't care if I don't have no food in my refrigerator. I'll fast, God, and you'll bring something to my table. God, I don't care if there's no my water cut off. I will go out to the, the, the park, get me some buckets, fill it up, and come back and get on my face. What happens when the enemy comes in like a flood and all hell breaks loose? Do you start worrying about your stuff, get on your pity party? Oh, woe is me. Oh, I ain't got no money. I can't go over here. I can't buy no new this. I can't do that. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Or do you say, Father, I worship you in the name of Jesus. Father, I know what it looks like right now, but it's not going to be like this already. It's not going to be like this tomorrow. It's not going to be like this the next day. Father, I'm going to worship you in the midst of the storm. I'm going to worship you no matter what happens. I'm going to serve you, praise you, and bless your holy name. I'm going to get to church before anybody else gets there, and I'm going to praise God like I've lost my mind. Or do you sit there on a pity party at church and let everybody know your problems because you're hoping the church going to pay your bills this month? You want the church to pay your bills so you look pitiful so somebody say, Sister, what's wrong? Brother, what's wrong? So you can roll out that list of bills that you ain't paid because you've been jacking off your money. But you want somebody to pay your bills because you don't pay your own bills. But now that all the money's gone, you want to run to the church and say, Oh... I can't hardly praise God because I'm so weighed down. He said, cast his burdens, your burdens on him because he cares for you. Why don't you cast them bills to the Lord and do right by it? So my first question was, what you snacking on? What you snacking on? Are you running to the boat snacking on that? Are you at midnight watching them on nasty movies, on the TV? Are you snacking on porn? Are you snacking on the most dirty Playboy books? What you snacking on? Because you want the Holy Spirit to dwell here? You want Him to live here and you putting porn up in here? You want the Holy Spirit to live here and you sucking down alcohol like you drinking down Peru? What you snacking on on the other side? Folks that can't control their appetite, they're eating up half of Peru and drinking up the other half. And you want the Holy Spirit to live up in here? The Bible says we need to be able to bridle this thing. Right. He said the gird of the loins of your mind. Everything that you do begins in your mind. So if you're not girding up your mind, what happens? The enemy comes in like a flood and beats you upside your head. Telling you that everything that you think you need, you got to have. Tell that you got to have this, you got to have that. Because you're snacking on the buffet table of Satan. Imagine a big old table, buffet full. And from the one end of the table to the next, Satan got everything you like. Yes. Honey, he got them smooth thighs between the sheets. Yeah. Ooh, in the midnight hour. Because ain't nothing calling you at 3 a.m. You know that mean you no good. Oh, so he got them smooth thighs between the seats at 3 a.m. Girl, he got alcohol over here. He got some pornography over here. He got going to the boat over here. He got a little lust right here. He got a little of this right here. But he make everything seem like it's all right. Because Satan will never inconvenience you. He will make it good to you. He don't make it feel good. That girl used to say, uh, tell me something good. Satan show sure gonna tell you something good. And he gonna tell you that you love it, you like it, and you want it, and you got to have it. Because he wants you snacking on everything on that table, but he don't want you going to the only table over there. He don't want you at the altar. He don't want you at the only thing on Jesus' table is this word. 
That's all that's on there. But Satan got something for you all along the way. You will never find a day that Satan will do something to inconvenience you. There will never be a day because he always wants you convenient. He wants you convenient. He wants you to feel good about yourself. He wants you to think that everything's all right and that everything you do, you can justify. Can't stand folks that justify they sin. Boy, when you get to justifying your sin, something wrong with it. You know, I did that because such and such and such and such. And I did that because this happened. And I did that because that happened. And this happened. I didn't mean to get angry and mad because I said that. I didn't mean to go over there and do this. You know, I'm just a kiss Pookie and all my clothes fell off. The devil is a lie. Right. You were snacking on Pookie from the first place. <laughs> this thing right here, this, you can never satisfy this. Thing. You know, now I don't care what you do to this thing, you will never satisfy it. It's got to die. You got to lay it on the altar and you got to kill it. You got to gut it like a fish. You got to kill it. Kill it from the root because this thing right here will send you busting hell wide open. This thing will never be satisfied. So what you snacking on? What you snacking on? People don't have a hunger for God. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6, hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible says, be ye holy for, my, for I am holy. So if we're not running after righteousness, if we're not pursuing holiness, what do we pursue? Amen. If we're lackluster, lazy, trifling, stagnant, don't want God for real, why folks got to prime you like a pump to get you to praise? Why folks got to prime you like a pump to get you to lift your arms and worship to God? If they said, I'll give you $100, if you worship, your hands would be up quick. Everybody's hands would be up. All hands, hands everywhere. You'd be hitting each other in the face. Trying to get your hands up because they're giving you $100 just to pretend you worship it. All of those false worship. The Bible says the hour is coming now is when they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when you go to church and you worship him on a lie, you ain't doing nothing. You might as well stay at home and watch Jerry Springer. Because you sitting up in there and getting nothing, ain't doing nothing, ain't going to give nothing, ain't going to worship God for real. Sure ain't going to praise him. I ain't going to sweat my hair out. Because we're not hungering and thirsting after righteousness. When all hell breaks and you're loose in your life, you run up in the church then. When all hell breaks loose in your life, you asking God to move on you. How come people don't pray when everything's good? How come folks ain't worshiping things when everything is going good? They get to praying when stuff go bad. They get to calling out to God. Lord, please deliver me. Oh, God, please don't let my job shut down. Oh, Lord, don't let my husband leave me. Oh, God, well, I feel like I'm going to preach right now. God, hey. Oh, Lord. They get up and just start preaching in the house. Amen. I feel it coming on. Hey. They get to doing that little funny dance. They want God to move. Right. But how come you think you go, you got the right to pimp God? God ain't your pimp. He said hunger and thirst after righteousness. And I manipulate him into moving over your life. All of this stuff, a bunch of this stuff folks doing is manipulation. And they got manipulation down in the church down to a science. They got it down, see? Down to a science. They can manipulate their way into anything. But God sees it and he knows it. He says, hunger and thirst after righteousness. We should be hungering and thirsting after more of God. We should be saying, God, I don't need you to pay my bills today. I just want more of you. I don't need you to do this for me. I just want more of you. What you want, God? I just want more of you. What you want, daughter? I just want more of you. What you want, son? I just need more of you, God. That's all we ought to be asking God. It's for more of you. More of God. Because he said, seek ye first. In Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, your car, your money, your land, your cattle, your husband, your kids, your job, your this, and all of that going to be added into your life if you would just seek God first. Why do you think this tent ain't filled? All the taxes we sent out today, all the flyers you passed out, all the stuff that went on the Facebook, it ought to be full. But folks are not chasing after God. You ain't told them some big name was out up under this tent. You wouldn't have had room on the block. They would have been everywhere. Amen. They'd have rolled up in here. Cars would be all up on the highway. They'd have to block.
watch the highway because they're going to see the name. They're not going to see God. They're going to chase after the name to see if they can get a hookup. But they're not chasing after righteousness. They're not chasing after holiness. They're not chasing after the spirit of the living God. When they begin to chase after God, then God will let you catch him. You mess around and bump into God. You chase him so hard. Oh God, I didn't know I bumped into you. Oh God. Oh Lord. Ha. You got all up in God's business. Amen. All because we chasing after God. Yes. We don't have no God chasers right now. We got folks chasing power, no, prestige, God. money, People. fortune, fame, land, cattle. They come to church to get a husband or a wife, but they coming to get their little freak on. Oh, mm -hmm. They ain't chasing after hunger and righteousness. They chasing after their freak on. Right. Up in the church, folks are like, oh, baby, the best freaks in the church. That's why they running up in there, so they can get their freak on. They chasing after anything but God. They got an agenda for everything. Every time they walk through that door, half of them. Amen. They didn't want their bills paid or they freak on. They just want to feel good that they went to church. But they're not chasing after hungerness, hungering after thirsty and righteousness. Thirsty for God, hungry for God, seeking God. Early will I seek thee. David said in 63 and 8, my soul follows hard after thee. How come we're not following hard after God? How come we go in the church lazy, don't want to speak, half mad, tired, just lazy, come in and want folks to prime you up? How come we ain't going in saying my soul follows hard after thee? How come you go to the prayer service and don't nobody want to pray? Why we got a prayer and don't nobody want to pray? What you come to prayer service for if you ain't praying? Say you look nasty self at home. You ain't praying. Like that, it don't take all the stuff. The devil is a lie. It takes fasting, it takes prayer, it takes consecration, it takes getting on your face before God, and it takes reading this word more than once a month. Stop toting that Bible around us. You can start reading it this week. John 7 Thank you, Lord. My, oh, y'all want to see my Bible? I'll show y'all this. Look at this. Wait, watch this. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. <laughs> this is my Bible, y'all. And it is raggedy. But that's how we it. I'm still using it. I'm just holding it together. It says in John 7, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. How many folks come in thirsty? How many folks thirsty for He said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. How many thirsty for God for real? We tell my little kids that sip thing, Lord, just I want to be just fill me up over your mouth of God. Just pour it down my throat. How many thirsty for God like that? That you won't just drown me, drench me, rain on me. I'll just submerge me in the water, God. Because when you're really thirsty for God, you want everything that you can get out of God. You will be pulling on it from morning when you get up. When you're in your dreams, you're still pulling on it. It's a midnight hour. Somebody, I can't talk on the phone now, baby. I'm pulling on God. I can't get, I can't come over there because I'm pulling on God. I can't go over there because I'm pulling, I can't talk to you. Bye. You need to, look now, by the way, you need to get you some too. <laughs> If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Yeah. The reason people are living failed lives, thank you, Holy Ghost. The reason that people are living failed lives is this. They're not pursuing God. Right. They're going up in churches and they sit there every Sunday, but they live in defeated lives. Yeah. They're living lives that the enemy's slapping them upside their head. They're so weak they can't fight sleep. They go up in the church and nothing is happening in their life. They look, come up in church looking prosperous, but at home they like off the gas off and they're about to get set out because God can't move on their life because he can't trust them because they're not coming unto him and drinking they're looking at they Pete, robbing Peter to pay Paul nothing good is happening because they're not 
pursuing the presence of God. They're not pursuing the presence, the manifested presence of God. And if you begin to pursue God, you're going to find it. He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture, scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's coming out of your belly? What's in your belly? What's in your belly? What's in your belly? Everyone said, what's in your wallet? wallet. What's in your belly? Is your belly dry and cracked and parched? See this ground? Look at this. Is this your belly? See this grass? See, the grass has been watered because this ain't what we supposed to do with our water. Grass, this is dry and parched. And this could be your belly. Because there's no living water in your belly. It's dry. It's green. It's brown in there because it's dying. When you don't put this living water in your belly, you will die. And you won't die as in killing your flesh. Your flesh will overtake you and subdue you and run you over. Your flesh will have its way in every area of your life. Your flesh will have you doing all kind of nasty stuff. Drinking, smoking, lying, cussing, gossiping, all of that. Because some of the stuff that your flesh has you do has nothing to do with you doing something in the physical. It has you doing something in the spirit realm. So when you miss it in the physical, it's got you, it's kicking you in the spirit realm right there. You may not be shoplifting, but you're stealing in the spirit. You may not be going and cussing, but you're lying in the spirit realm. Because your inner man has no conscience. It is seared. It is seared from the spirit of the living God. You know what seared means? Something is cut off. And when it gets cut, when you sear something, it gets smooth like this because you don't stop the flow of blood going through. So when you stop the flow of the blood of Jesus, then you can do anything, say anything, go anywhere, do anything to anybody, and it won't make a bit of difference because your soul is seared. Because you have not been keeping it fresh with the living water. Water never stagnates when it's moving. Moving water never stagnates. You let some, sit some water in a bowl and sit it on your porch and you come back in a few days, it's going to be flies, mosquitoes, and bugs, it's going to stink, all of that because it's stagnant, junk like stagnant water, sin likes a stagnant life, sin likes a stagnant life, stagnant, stinking, nasty, crusty, all of that, look at the film that gets on top of a water that never, piece of water that never moves, it's stagnant and that's how your inner man, some of us, have stagnant inner man. Some of us got an inner man that's so stagnant, so dead, so unconcerned that we can go to church and sit there and go to sleep. We can go to church and pretend to praise. We can go to church and do that little funky dance they do. Sorry, Lord, it ain't funky, but whatever that dance is they do it. They can do all of that. Because see, when that God ain't accepting that dance, it might as well be funky. Because it ain't real. That's some of that bootleg praise. Bootleg praise. My pages are in everywhere, but it's all right. At least they ain't going over there. So come on back. So if any man thirst, let him come unto me. And what? Do what? Drink. What? Drink. Drink. So what are y'all doing? Drink. Drinking. Get your drink. That's right. Get your drink on. He that believeth on me. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. The other side of your belly, and I'm going to close on this. When that belly is dry, when that belly is parched, you know what else that belly is? Dark. Amen. It's dark. A dark belly has no light. And who is the light? Jesus. Jesus is the light. So if your belly is dark, and I'm not talking about the physicality of your belly, I'm talking about your inner man, your inner belly, this inner man that tells you, don't do that, don't go there, don't do this, that one that speaks to you, that indwells you. I don't care what folks say they got saved in 1942, right. if the Holy Spirit ain't dwelling in you, something is wrong. Something really wrong with your life. So if there's a darkness in your life, a darkness in your belly, a darkness in your spirit man, then and that means that the light of the Christ uh, that we serve is not dwelling there and you still will do and say anything. And you'll stay hungry. You'll never... And you know what? A lot of people don't even know they're dark. A lot of folks have no clue that they're dark. A lot of people walking around right now are spiritually dead. Dark means dead. 
seriously dead people walking up and down church pews, singing, ushering, preaching. Folks are spiritually dead in the church. If you spiritually dead, you spiritually dead. I don't care what you say, because I don't care how much money you got, because Satan will bless his own agenda every day. Satan will bless you. The Lord blessing me, not necessarily. Not, not really. The enemy's doing that. When God begins to move in your life, it's because he knows he can trust you. Amen. It's because he knows that you are in this word, living this word, not just reading it. Folks read it every Sunday, but they're not living it. Right. Are they eating this word or are they snacking on this word? Uh -huh. A friend of mine asked at church last Sunday how many people read their word every day. And it was three people read, raised their hands. And I was one of them. I said, you know, I don't count. <laughs> I'm not a member here, so I don't count. <laughs> so if you got... Two people out of a bunch of people mm. reading their word. What do you mean? What do you think they're doing when they get home? <laughs> Snacking. They, they took what they got from the morning from pulling on the pastor and they snacked on that and they went on out the door. So if you are snacking on the word that comes from your pastor, you need to get up and repent. If you're snacking on the word that your pastor, whoever it is, your minister, your whoever, is giving you, and you go home and you don't apply that word to your life, you snacking. If you are living a defeated life and all that word you're sitting under, you snacking. If you are looking at TV tomorrow, I'm going to stay at home missionary Baptist, you snacking. <laughs> If you're taking all of that word and letting it hit concrete, you are snacking and you are going to continually live a defeated life. God cannot give you the fullness thereof. Understand? The fullness thereof. If you are snacking on His word. God wants us to get deep into the word. The Bible says in Psalm 42, deep calls unto deep. So the depths of God are calling to the depths of you. He's calling you to get off the surface and get into the depths of Him. Get off the surface of Christianity, get off the surface of your religion, your man-made religion, and get into the depths of a relationship with God. He wants you to have a relationship. He's studying your religion. He don't care if you Baptist, Pentecostal, or he don't care if you uh, she shot John. He wants you to have a relationship with him. He said, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for thee. So if you panting for God, if you thirsty for God, if you hungry for God, then that means you want a relationship with him. And a relationship says, this. I'm going after God with everything I got. I'm going after God with all of me. I'm giving him all I can. I'm in my word as often as I can. Morning, noon, night, day. I'm praying when I'm sitting at my job. I'm going after God with everything. 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 Stop giving God a toe. He wants the whole body. Everything. Stop giving him a toe. You say you thirsty. Stop putting the toe in the water. Get your whole body in there. Get your whole body. Because see, a lot of stuff we doing is keeping us from seeing him. Understand? I'm talking about seeing him. And I ain't talking about when you get to glory either. I'm talking about right here on earth. A lot of the stuff we doing we not seeing God. We pretending to be. We got all the little moves down. We got all of that mess down. Since we got it all down pat, we know how to look holy. Good God Almighty, we know how to look holy. And what was that? There was gas. That was straight gas. You just that was gas. That wasn't holy. That was gas. We got all that mess down pat, Apostle. We got it all. <laughs> what are you snacking on? What you snacking on? What you snacking on? Don't nobody know but you and Jesus. What you snacking on? What you hungry for? What are you really hungry for? Are you really hungry for God or are you just hungry for the things of this world? Are you really hungry for the fullness of God or are you just hungry for the stuff out of God's hand? Because if that's the case, just go out the street and get you a sugar daddy. Are you really hungry for God or you just want to give the impression that you are? You want to have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. A form of godliness means I look like I'm holy, I look like I'm righteous, I'm preaching the right things, I'm saying the right things, I'm acting like I got the right things. I got a form of godliness, but when it comes right down to it, my life is defeated. My life is defeated. 
too many defeated people. His legs are up. Let me make them. Are walking around every day. Right. They're not just on the street corner. They're in the, they're in the church. Amen. They're in the church, defeated, dry, and weary. He said in 42, when can I go and appear before God? There are so many people out here in these streets that are asking that question right now. When can I go and have an encounter with God? And we are the people that are supposed to be bringing them in to experience God. I'm not talking about a little dab or do you, a little this, little that, some of this, some of that. I'm talking about experiencing God. That means you have an experience or an encounter that lasts you a lifetime. But we can't go get them because we ain't got it ourselves. Amen. We can't go out there and highways and byways and compel nobody to come because half of us look just like the ones out there. We smell like them and they no game. <laughs> they go, I smell game out of you. You looking like, they looking at you going, I smell game. How you looking? You smell like me. They got that, you got that same worldly stench that they got. Same worldly stench that they got. Because we still got, they got that game on them and we got the smell of game. We, when we were washed in the blood of the Lamb, we were washed clean. When we were washed clean, he said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. When God wash me, he said, purge me with his heart and I shall be clean. Wash me whiter than snow. Wash me whiter than the world. Wash me whiter than my sin. Wash me whiter than the folks out there so I don't smell like them and don't look like them. Wash me whiter than snow. And when we get washed in the blood of the Lamb, then we won't smell like them and they'll be drawn to him. He said, if I do lift up, I'll draw all men unto me. You can't draw nobody when you looking like them and smelling like them and cussing like them. They smell you. I smell game on you. And they back away because you got as much game as they got. And they know they raggedy and nasty. They ain't trying to meet nobody like them. They don't want that. They want real. They want experience in God for real. They want to see the love of God in action. Our lives are supposed to be the action. Your life is supposed to be a representation of what Jesus did. But we so busy playing church. We so busy being our own agendas. We so busy doing our own thing. Doing it any way you want it. We ain't no Burger King Christians. Have it your way. Have church your way. Have it this way. Have it that way. We ain't no Burger King Church. We're the church of the living God. But we acting like anything but my God. We need to repent. Every church on every corner need to get on their face and repent. They need to lay the building on his face and tell it to repent. Because we done messed up so bad. God said two weeks ago, he said, I am ready to place the wealth of the nation into the hands of my remnant. He said, but many of them are not in position. They're not ready. Why would I give the wealth of the nation to a jack leg preacher? Why would I give the wealth of the nation to a whole mongering pastor? Why would I give the wealth of the nation to a backslidden evangelist? Why would he? He would have no reason to. Because the minute they got it, they took a humongous building and never feed anybody on the corner like this. This tent costs money. Because I told you to be quiet. The food we're giving away tomorrow costs money. Let's go in the bathroom. Everything that we're doing here, it costs something to somebody. Whether it was Pastor Sarah and Life Abundant and it is written to me and Pastor Greg, it costs somebody. But why would God? the nations into the hands of people he can't trust. We need to get in position. We need to get it right. We need to be in a place where God can place the wealth of the nations in our hands so we can do this everywhere. Not just once a year. We can have one of these going on once a month. Put it up. Put up a billboard for it. Put it on TV. Put it on radio. Put it everywhere. And we can draw the people. Feed them every day. If they come every day, give them a bag of groceries every day. But they got to 
gonna sit here and listen to somebody preach for 20, 30 minutes. They're gonna get that word. They're gonna get the word. They're gonna tie some word up in here. They're gonna get some word. So if God would release the wealth of the nations into the hands of the people he can trust, we can do this on every other corner. We can have it here, we can have it in Kansas, we can have it in Grandview, we can have it up north, we can have this everywhere and feed them every night if it meant for it. If God called to feed it, we can feed them every night. It wouldn't have to be no once a year. If the wealth of the nations was put into the hands of the people God could trust. But the rest of them holding it up. So we got to pray and ask God for the relief. We got to pray and ask God to release the wealth of the nations into the hands of those he can trust. So that we can do the work that needs to be done in these last days. So we can lead the people to the Savior. We can lead the people to where God is calling them to. Lead them to repentance, yeah. to salvation, yeah. 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 to come and know the true and living Savior. Yeah. Yeah. Whether they learn it under a tent, some of them will come to a tent before they come to the church. Yeah. Yeah. They'll come here before they go there. Yeah. But we need the wealth of the nations released into the hands of the people God can trust. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can be hungry for God. The world is hungry. Yeah. The, hungry the world is hungry. Yeah. They want something. They're they searching everything they can find to find the right answers. But we don't have the answers because, you know what, we don't have the answers because we ain't asking the right question. Amen. We ain't even asking God the right question. We try to give God the question. Here, God, hear my question. Now you answer these. Amen, amen. Here, God, hear my questions. Now you fill in the blanks. We want God to meet us amen. instead of us going to meet God. We need to get to God. Yeah. We need to meet God. Yeah. We need to go and say, God, here I am. Yeah. Present myself and stop singing that song. I give myself away because you ain't giving God nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. nothing. Nothing. We need to get in a position so that God can move on us, then bless us. Don't ask God to bless your mess. Oh, stop asking God to bless your mess. It's a mess. Your life is messy. Your kids are messy. Your house is messy. Your husband is messy. Your job is messy. Your business is messy. Stop asking God. Your church is messy. Stop asking God to bless your mess. Oh, we want to lead them to Christ and we ain't got Christ ourselves. Wow. We got to get in position. Don't ask God for an assignment. Until you get in alignment with his purpose and plan. Don't ask God to give you something that you know you're not ready for in your heart. God knows that most of us are not ready for what he really has for us. God's got a, this tent can contain half of the destiny that most of us have. You couldn't put it in that building under this tent. You couldn't put it in that house and fix more houses because we're not ready. God can't give it to us. He got to give us a look. Just a little smidgen. Just a little smidgen. Just break you off a little something. But because we're not in position as a body, as the body, we're not working together, we're not praying together, we're not worshiping together, we want to divide the lines of don't come over here, this is my church, this is my members, these are my people. We want to do this and we want to keep everything separate. Blacks can't worship with whites. Whites can't worship with the Mexicans. Men got to sit over there and women got to sit over here and we can't get nothing together. We messy. Yeah. We talking about we hungry for God. We thirsty for God. We hungry for righteousness. Righteousness says that we don't separate each other. Righteousness says that I don't judge my sister over here. Righteousness says that I don't look at you and look down on you. Righteousness says if you need some help, I'm there for you. Righteousness says that if you got ain't got no food in your house and I got food, you need to come and get a bag of groceries. Righteousness says if you need something from me, let me be there and not talk about you when you need. Righteousness. It says living upright in all things. Psalm 84 and 11 says, No good thing will I withhold from you. Amen. If you will walk upright before me. If God gave you everything and you were walking upright, you have to.
to share it with somebody. You sure agree. You gotta give it away. You have to share it. Share your talent. Share your gift. Share your knowledge. Share your wisdom. Share your stuff. Share it, Pastor. Every pastor in Missouri should have got a flyer, sent some folks down here, passed out some flyers, told some folks, brought somebody over here to be blessed. And I bet you tomorrow there'll be a whole bunch of them here for that food. I bet you'll be a bunch of them here for that food tomorrow. They're going to come get some groceries. They're coming to make some groceries tomorrow. They're coming because whatever they can get, they want it out of the hand of God. That food should be for the world. Yes. For, the, for these folks out here, they ain't saved. Right. But there'll be more church folks coming to get their food than folks off the street. And here's what's wrong with that. Something wrong with it. Something wrong with it. We as a body already have ours. Right. We should already have it. Amen. You shouldn't be needing this. You should already have it. Amen. So when they come to get it, you handing them a bag and praying for them. Or they sitting up under this tent and getting another word tomorrow. They sitting up under the tent and they hearing somebody say, look what God did for me. Amen. Because we got to be in position. For real. Amen. We got to stop playing with this thing. Amen. We got to go tell somebody we playing. Amen. When you get to church Sunday morning, you got to tell them, go, go up to that altar and say, Father, I've been playing with you. I've been playing church. I've been playing holy. I've been playing righteous. I've been playing, I've just been playing. Amen. If I go in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Because I've been playing church. Now I understand why you ain't blessed me. I understand why my stuff raggedy as a can of crap. Because I've been playing with you, God. And I'm sorry that I've been playing with you. I'm sorry I've been doing wrong to you. Forgive me because against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. That's what y'all ought to be doing. It's getting up there telling God you sorry. I ain't somebody tell the bishop, tell the pastor, tell the apostle. Tell God you sorry. Because you ain't sinned against her. You ain't sinned against me. Pastor Lindley, you sinning against God right, right, when you play in church. Yeah. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you tonight. We glorify you tonight. We magnify you. Lord, you are worthy. Yes, you are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. You're the Prince of Peace and everlasting life. Now, Father God, I ask you to search the hearts of the people tonight. Your word says in Psalm 139, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts. You discern my going out and my lying down. And you are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, oh Lord, you know it completely. You hear me in, behind, and before. And you have laid your hand upon me. You said in your word that such knowledge is too wonderful for me. And it is too high, I cannot attain it. He said in your word, tell me, Lord, where can I go from your spirit? And where can I flee from your faith? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, and most of the time we do, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, oh God, your hand is there to guide me, and your right hand is there to uphold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall hide me, and the night become light around me. Even the darkness, oh God, shall not be darkness to you, but night shall shine as the day, and darkness is as light to you. For you created my innermost being, and I, you knit me together, oh God, in my mother's womb. And I praise you, oh God, for I am fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. Y'all hear that? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Father God, your people are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your word says, search me, O oh Lord. Search me, y'all say, search me. Search me. Oh Lord, search me. Search me, O oh Lord. Y'all just stay right there. Search me, O oh Lord. Search me, O oh Lord. And know my heart. Search me, O oh Lord. And know my heart. Search me, O oh Lord. And know my heart. Search me, O oh Lord. And know my heart. Try me, God. Try me, Jesus. Test me, Jesus. Test me, Jesus. 
some of y'all going through some, some tests. Yeah, man. Right now. Yeah. Somebody in here going through tests dealing with anger. Yeah. See, when you ask God to say, God, take break anger off of me. Come yeah. on. God's going to send anger in your direction. Because you said God break anger off me. He ain't going to just break it off like a limb. Some of you are dealing with unforgiveness. Bitterness. And you saying, God, take this unforgiveness off me. Take it off me. But then he's going to bring up stuff that you don't like. Because now you got to deal with it. you got to face it. He can't just... Go poof. Ain't no poof the magic thing here. Ain't no poof. Some of you are dealing with, in your heart, you really not in God. You in the church, but some of you dealing in your heart that you really not there. You go, but you really not there. So you really dealing with a backslidden heart. So you ask God to search that thing and deal with that thing. And give you a hunger and thirst after him. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me, test me. The tests are coming. Some of you dealing with not even dealing with your money right. And now you're in a financial strain. And you're asking God to fix it. But what's going to happen if you don't, he don't fix it? He's going to show you how to work it out. He's going to show you how to walk it out. Because if he gave you money right now, you just blow it. You just blow it because you ain't learned your lesson, not really. You ain't really learned your lesson. Some of you are dealing with a broken heart. And you won't buy the music. But before he can mend it, he's got to show you how it got broken. No, you can't like it. Door. You got to know how where the door is broken in order to fix it. And Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. And he's knocking at it, but it's broken. And because it is broken, you can't let him in. 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 in. So search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Some of you want more of God, but you don't know how to get it. Wow. Some of you are stuck in places that you don't even belong. You're stuck in a place where you're not getting fed the word of God. But you don't know how to leave because you're stuck in religion. Amen. So what happens when you get stuck in something, you just get used to it. And you just go along with it. You go along with the program. But the program don't work. Sure and you get frustrated, you get tired, now you're tired. Because you don't understand why you're not gone. You understand why you leave the same way you came in. Because in reality, you know you left the same way you came in. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are dealing with, and this is for a woman. You're dealing with a man that really don't want you. Really don't want you, but because you got soul ties. See, when you you give up that, when you give up the holy of holies, women, when you give up the holy of holies to a man that's not your husband, you develop a soul tie. And that soul tie is hard to break. Because the Holy of Holies only belongs to God. And your soul tie should be with God. And God only. So the man really don't want you. He just wanted the Holy of Holies. He just wanted the Holy of Holies. Just kidding, y'all. So you're going to have to get on your face before God and ask Him to show you deliverance. Show you how to break that soul tie, so you start running around being a fool for somebody that don't want you. Okay? Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts. There's that last word right there. Your thoughts, your mind, your mind right now is what's got you all in turmoil. It's got you confused. It's got you jacked up. Your mind is holding you hostage. 
to the bondages that Satan has you under. He said, your thoughts. He said, know your thoughts. Know your thoughts. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There needs to be some mind renewal tonight. There needs to be some minds renewed up in here tonight for all of these things that God is showing your heart tonight. He's stirring up your mind to show you the stuff that's got you all jacked up. He's stirring up your thoughts and showing you the stuff that's got your life all in turmoil, drama. Living in drama, folks walking around in a perpetual state of drama. Every time they see you, you got drama. Nobody want to be around drama kings and queens. Drama. Drama. Everywhere you walk, there's drama. There's chaos. Your mind is in drama. Your mind is in chaos. Your mind is in a, in a place where you can't even hear God. And that's a dangerous place. Because if you cannot hear God, you're going to hear the enemy. And if you hear the enemy and you act on his manipulation, his deception, his suggestions, you're going to fall deeper into a pit. So when you say, God, search me and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, ask God to search your thoughts, your thought process, your mind. Ask God to search your mind tonight and reveal to you the things that have hold, held you back for so long, held you captive, held you jacked up, held you in bondage, got a low jack on your life, got you living in spiritual low to bar in lack. We are kings and priests. We're not supposed to be in lack. But your thought life has you in lack because so a man thinketh, so is he. So, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to search the hearts of the people tonight. God, I ask you to do a circumcision in them tonight. I ask you to move on them, God, and let them see the revelation of what's really going on in their lives, what's really going on in their mind, what's really going on in their heart. Search them tonight, oh God. Because you are ready to do some new things in them. But they got to be in position, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to even make this 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 place right here, this thread, make it a threshing floor, make it an altar, God, that as you begin to reveal things to them, that they will begin to just come up here, God, and ask you to search them, Lord. Not ask me, not ask apostle, not ask pastors, but ask you, God, to search them and do a new thing in them. It's time for change, people. It's time that your life begin to change tonight. That your life never be the same anymore. That you don't leave from up under this tent carrying that same weight, that same baggage, that same bondage, them same traps, them same stairs, snares, them same tricks and lies. Stop believing the lies. My God, stop believing the lies. I don't care if they're coming from the mouth of some sweet little thing or they're coming from the mouth of somebody that you think you trust. You got to stop believing the lies. You got to ask God to renew your mind. Renew and transform your mind tonight in the name of Jesus. Don't go away from here living this thing and looking like you got it all together, but you tore from the floor. God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to thresh them tonight, God. Just begin to thresh them tonight, God. To let them begin to thresh like we got. Thresh it out of them, God. Beat it out of them, God. Tear it out of them, God. Burn it out of them, God. Cut it out of them, God. Do a surgery in them, God. Do a thing in them like never before. God, cut it. Cut it in the spirit, God. Cut it. Cut it in the spirit, God. Cut it. Cut it, God. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it, God. Cut it. Oh, God, cut it. Cut it, God. Oh, it. Oh, Yeah. 
God. He wanted to show us he enjoyed the world system to bring the world in. He had taken the world system. He said you're in the world, but you're not of the world. So he had taken the system of the world. Amen.